What's up guys and welcome back to the G-Rat Show, I'm G-Rat. With Barcelona's latest loss to Girona, Real Madrid have officially won La Liga for the 2023-2024 season, so congratulations to Real Madrid on honestly a very successful season. I think they only had two losses the entire year, won the Super Cup, won La Liga, and I think they're going to win the Champions League. But looking at Barcelona's season, a trophyless season the first time since 2019-2020, what went wrong for Barcelona this year? And what do they have to fix moving forward to make sure this doesn't happen again? There's a couple things we're going to touch on, plus more coming up next. So I think there's three main reasons why Barcelona was so unsuccessful this season. Number one is injuries. Number two is a lack of effort by the team. And number three is coaching. I also want to touch on what Barcelona is going to do moving forward into next season. And there was some big news that just dropped earlier today about a specific player on Barcelona that's going to be put up for sale. So we'll touch on that too. But number one, the injuries with Barcelona, right? It's not like Barcelona has a one superstar, right? They don't have Mbappe. They don't have a Kevin De Bruyne. They just have a lot of very good players. Throughout the season, we saw a lot of injuries right? Pedri consistently. And not only was he injured, he was extremely inconsistent. And to be honest, he looked really lazy at certain points in the season. For example, this last match in El Clasico, he could have easily tried to stop their counterattack. He was just kind of lazy and doesn't look like he's giving it his all. I don't know if it's because these injuries are lingering, but his injuries and inconsistent play was huge. Frankie de Jong off and on injured. Gundogan had to play literally every single match this season. And he's one of the oldest players on the team. You can't tell me that someone like him, as good as he is, needs a rest. He has to rest. Gavi was out. Balde was out. And to be honest, I think Gavi was a huge loss. I don't think people realize how big of a loss that is because not only is he a good player, he actually is the one player, usually the only player that genuinely tries extremely hard, that gives it his all every match, that hustles. He's all over the pitch. He's making tackles. He's pressing. He is who we need. We needed him. We needed him in El Clasico. We needed him in the Champions League and we didn't have him. And if Barcelona had him, that allows him to give Pedri more rest. Gundogan, it allows him to get rest. They didn't use Fermin Lopez as much as they should have. We've been seeing him more and more lately, and he's a threat on the attack. I don't know if they didn't realize what they had in him or the type of player he could be. Balde, that injury hurt Barcelona. He didn't have the greatest season, but he's so young, and he is fast. And he's a better defender than Cancelo. And if Balde is healthy, right, Cancelo can play on the right or the left and swap time with him. And then Koundé could have played and swap time with Kabarsi, give him some rest. Because let's be honest, as good as Kabarsi, the talent he is, I think if Balde is healthy, they probably run Balde and Cancelo as outside backs and Koundé and Arujo as the center backs just to have more experience, especially in the second leg. I probably would have done that. But again, that's another issue that Barcelona had to overcome was losing Balde. Rafinha, more so in the first half of the season, dealt with his fair share of injuries. Lewandowski was injured for a minute. Joao Felix had his injuries. I think Kinsella was even injured at times too. I mean, there was a lot. I think there was a point in the season where there was like seven or eight injuries at one point. So it's not an excuse, but it's definitely something you have to take into consideration. Like, you know what? They didn't have some of their really important players. Any team that misses some of their important players is going to struggle at times. So that is the first reason I think Barcelona had a really tough time this year. Now, number two is the lack of effort. I mean, it's completely effort evident that really maybe Rafinha at times and Fermin Lopez, but nobody else. I mean, Gavi couldn't play, so I can't include him. Nobody really seemed to care at all if they lose. Barcelona, it's like these players now, they have this like stigma that because they're on Barcelona, they're entitled and they're supposed to win every match. And if they lose, it's they start feeling sorry for themselves. And it's just like, oh, you know, woe is me. You know, we don't we should have won that match. It was ridiculous. No, Barcelona is not like the team to beat anymore. They're not. The teams to beat now are Real Madrid and Manchester City. Barcelona is just they're just an okay team at this point. Any team can beat Barcelona at this point where they're at right now. The club is not a dangerous team. They're really not. They're a team that they can compete with the teams like Real Madrid and and PSG, but then you're going to lose to Girona twice in one season. I think they lost to Shakhtar or someone else in the Champions League this season. They're going to lose to mid-tier teams in the, you know, in La Liga. They're going to lose in the Copa del Rey. It's it's going to happen, right? They're not an elite club right now. And a lot of the players like Lewandowski, they act like they're too big and too good for the club at times. They have these attitudes and it's like, what are you doing? You haven't proven none of these players 
players on this team have proven that they are allowed to have, you know, a cockiness to them or a little bit of a chip on their shoulder. They're not an elite club. Unfortunately, I hate to say it. Real Madrid's winning the Champions League and making it far consistently. Bayern Munich is a threat in the Champions League consistently. Manchester City, I mean, I know they're spending all this money, but they're winning big trophies consistently. Barcelona does not. Until they can win a Champions League, they're not going to be an elite club. They're always going to be relevant. But any team is that plays Barcelona now, they're not afraid of Barcelona. They're not. And the mentality that they have and the mentality that's incorporated into the club and the culture, it's just not the type of culture. It's not a winning culture. It's not Bayern Munich. It's not Man City. It's not Real Madrid. They don't have this willingness to compete and do whatever it is to win and come back if they're losing or hold a lead. They don't do that. That's that's the other huge issue that Barcelona has. Is As much talent as they have, right? Barcelona has talent to compete with any team in the world. I mean, we saw it this year. I mean, the Super Cup was a fluke, but... Barcelona easily could have beat Real Madrid in La Liga at least once this year. Probably should have tied them both times, the bare, the bare minimum. They can compete with PSG. They can compete with Bayern Munich. They can compete with these teams. They have the talent. And at the end of the day, if you have the talent, the only two other things that you need is you actually want to win and care more than the other team and want to win more than anything. And then coaching. They have poor coaching. In a lot of moments, poor tactics, very, very frequently, and none of the players seem like they genuinely care at all if they win or lose. So I guess that brings us into number three is coaching, right? And we can't blame Chavi for everything. You can't blame Chavi for Arujo being an idiot and getting a red card against PSG. You can't blame Chavi for Cancelo not defending and doing a stupid tackle in the box on Dembele, whether it was a penalty or not. I want to say you can blame Chavi and you can't for the way Lewandowski is. I mean, he allows him way too much freedom and cuts him way too much slack when he has these poor performances, when he has these bad attitude issues. I mean, he's extremely selfish when he has the ball. But then if he doesn't get the ball, we talk about it all the time. His hands go up, he gets mad, he yells, he has an attitude. He acts like he's too big for the club in a lot of moments. And Chavi, it's an issue with him and it's not. I mean, you can only control him so much. He's a full-grown man, but at the same time, you don't have to continue to play him. You can only do so much as a manager, but if your players don't want to win usually that stems from sometimes above they might not be happy with what's going on in the locker room or their management we don't know I think the right manager can change everything and I like Xavi I just don't think he's a world-class manager he was a world-class player definitely knows his stuff but from a tactical standpoint I mean in the big moments Barcelona could have beat Real Madrid twice this season they should be in the Champions League semifinal right and it's it comes down to tactics it comes down to not playing the right players not implementing the right formations and tactics and using the right players in the right positions. And unfortunately, this is why another reason why Barcelona has struggled to do anything major this season. So let me know down below if you guys agree with those are the three main reasons why Barcelona was extremely unsuccessful this season. If I missed something, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Now, looking forward to next season, we already spoke about it a ton. It's a CDM and a left winger. And unfortunately, I don't see this happening. I see Barcelona doing something stupid and keeping Rafinha and Ferran Torres and then getting Danny Almo, which has been rumored that they're interested in him. Why on earth would you go out and get Danny Almo? That's worse than Ferran Torres. I, I, if they go out and get Danny Almo, I, I like don't even want to watch Barcelona next season. That's literally uh, taking a step backwards. You might as well keep that money and spend it on De Jong's salary. Apparently, Barcelona also put Frankie De Jong up on the transfer market, so we'll see if this actually plays out. Uh, Man United, PSG, and Bayern Munich are the three interested clubs. Uh, if I'm Frankie and I have to leave, I'm immediately going to Bayern. I think that's a great spot for him. You know, you're going to have a great chance to win the Champions League and you know other trophies. So, you know, best of luck for him. I want to keep him, but I understand you know from a salary standpoint. But I can just see Barcelona doing something so dumb, selling. Frankie de Jong, keeping Rafinha, keeping Ferran Torres, extending the loan option on Joao Felix, which I, I'm fine if they keep him, by the way, but and then getting Danny Almo. That would make no sense. If you're going to sell Frankie de Jong, you better get Nico Williams for sure, or another equivalent left winger, and then you have to get Kimmich or Zubamendi, one of those two. It, it's a must. You have to do it. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. And then if you have enough after those two signings, then go sign Bernardo Silva. Danny Almo is a ridiculous signing. So if they can do this moving forward... And they make the right signings. That's huge. And then they're going to get Balde and Gavi back. Laminia Mall and Kabarsi, that's another year of experience for them. They're going to be better. My only other suggestion is just get rid of Lewandowski. Find a way to get rid of him. He just doesn't do anything on the pitch. He just is, I can't talk about him anymore because everyone knows how I feel. He's one of the greatest strikers, you know, we'll ever see. We just never really saw it with Barcelona because it was past his prime. 
And he was okay last year. His stretch at Barcelona, I've been un- unimpressed. And I don't like his attitude. I lost respect for him. And he's just got to go. I mean, he's just too expensive. He's old. Play Vitor Roque. Let him play because that's a whole other issue. We need to keep him and give him confidence. And we need to start playing our younger players. That's what has to happen. So if Barcelona makes a couple of these transfers and assuming everyone stays healthy and Pedro doesn't get injured in the Euros and just depending on all of that, Barcelona will be better next season, but these have to happen. So let me know what you guys think down below. And if you made it this far, let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. I appreciate you guys sticking around and watching. And I hope to see you guys back here next time on the G Retro.